We are in Porto for the 12th edition of the Trans Europa Festival for the 2022 edition. I'm very happy to be here, of course, and I'm very motivated by this rich program that we have for the festival because it combines arts and politics and it shows that people interested in arts can also be connected to politics and vice versa which I truly believe is also the way to, to go forward. This program, of course, that we have for the festival is, is very rich, over five full days. And we have several citizens' assemblies taking place uh, during the program of the festival. Popular assemblies, I should say, uh, to include both residents and citizens of Europe. And we have popular assemblies taking place with local people living in Porto or in Portugal. And we have, of course, also the transnational assembly of uh, the process that we call Assemblies of Solidarity, where we bring people from the past 20 uh, local popular assemblies that we had across Europe and they come and gather here together in Porto to build together the transnational assembly and to build together the Porto Declaration on Fundamental Rights. We have been organizing an assembly at the Lusofuna University specifically with the international students and this is very interesting and that's what uh, our partner the Lusofuna University wanted to, to highlight to give the floor to international students so that they can say what it feels like as a foreigner to be living in Porto, to be living in Portugal, what rights do they have, what rights do they not have, such as apparently very difficult access to healthcare. An EU country, a Schengen country, yet they don't have equal access to healthcare like Portuguese people do. We've also had a, a very enriching assembly at Valongo with the, the municipality of Valongo. Um, that has been very proactive and uh, very uh, motivated to work with us uh, on this. And we had a popular assembly gathering some of the main groups of activists representing the underrepresented communities in Portugal, such as the Roma community, the Afro-descendant communities, the migrating communities. And those activists gathered together in this popular assembly in Valongo to work out together what do they think is lacking at the moment to support the civil society, to support the underrepresented communities in Portugal, and what should the institutions do at local level, at national level, at EU level, to finally commit to promoting the access to the rights of those communities, the equal access to their rights. We've done a very like extensive and long-lasting over several months work of connecting with activists of uh, Afro-descendant communities, of Roma communities and of course those people those activists those representatives of those communities were like thank you for organizing this because we need a space for this and we need a space to connect and I think in Portugal that's why it was very important to organize popular assemblies here the various underrepresented communities actually maybe don't have strong connections between them and so they don't have the capacity to join forces to fight together for equal access to their rights. I believe that this is one of the main points that we, we brought uh, with the Trans Europa Festival, is that we provided the space and the opportunity for those communities to gather together and to join their forces for more power. We're gonna continue organizing popular assemblies across Europe up until uh, the next European elections specifically. This is now our main uh, strategic goal. We are thinking about the next European elections of 2024. The campaign must start now. We must start to act and to advocate for equal access to fundamental rights now because the campaign for the EU elections is starting already. Also, the Conference on the Future of Europe is reaching its conclusions right now in May uh, in Strasbourg. This first time exercise can definitely be improved, but at least it took place despite the pandemic, despite many difficulties, it did take place for one year long. I hope that this will lead the way for more direct participative democracy across Europe. For sure, uh, this will be one of the main points that we want to highlight for the campaign and the advocacy program up until the next European elections in 2024. How can we make European politics accessible and how can we make civic engagement accessible for the many before we even reach the next European elections. We've been involving especially some young participants in the process of uh, the popular assemblies, of the citizens' assemblies. I believe that the participation of young people in civic engagement is 
crucial. They are the ones, after all, who will be living through the consequences of the decisions that we make now. That being said, I also believe that youth engagement shouldn't be a void word, a void term that we overuse. And we should be careful with it. And I believe that also those young people, those young activists from the young generations, they can also learn from the other generations. They can learn from the context and the stories and um, the experiences of uh, the other older generations. And I believe in the intergenerational connection to build a future that also doesn't repeat the mistakes of the past.